Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today, I'm going to quickly discuss a few important tips about new things in Hefref. So let's quickly go through uh, these things. That's a brief introduction of mine. Uh, then we move on to next slide. This is introduction to my Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find a lot of academic and public, public awareness videos in English and Urdu on these two sites. Let's move on to HFREF updates. I quickly go through these few slides to keep this presentation for more than 10 minutes. Definition we all know. HFREF, a heart failure as a whole, is not just a stolic problem. You have problem with filling as well. So it's very important to understand this definition that clinical syndrome that can result from any structural or functional cardiac disorder that impairs the ability of ventricle to fill with or eject blood. So filling and ejection, both problems are with heart failure. And for that basis, uh, we've decided heart failure into different stages, these classification are uh, in relation to ejection fraction as well. So let's quickly go through them. Stage A, all those patients who are at risk of heart failure. So a number of conditions, which are actually some maybe just hypertension, diabetes, but they are stage A heart failure. That we need to understand. Stage B, the patient without current or uh, previous symptom signs of heart failure, but evidence of one of the following. Structural heart defect and level of increased risk factor, increased natriuretic peptides. So increased filling pressures and some structural defect. C is symptoms and D is end stage. Then within symptomatic patient, very, very important to make out is your patient de novo, new onset heart failure. Is this patient previously had symptom and presently having resolution of symptoms? You may come across in your OPD such by such kind of patient. Persistent, in spite of treating treatment, your patient is persistently having symptom. And last group, worsening. So that means gauging your patient's uh, symptoms, hemodynamics, very important, very important. Then, according to ejection fraction, you have Reduced ejection fraction, mildly reduced ejection fraction, and preserved ejection fraction, cut marking from less than 40, 40 to 50, and greater than 50. Then one more class coming up with this HEFREF, HEFPEF, mildly reduced AF, is HEFIMPEF, that is, previously had some LV dysfunction, and presently the function has improved. And now coming to have ref that now that category of heart failure where your patient's ejection fraction is less than 40. Even this have ref is syndrome, not actual diagnosis, because you can have multiple etiologies for that. You may have precipitant with it, you may have other comorbidities with it. That's very important to identify. So always remember these three things. So this even HEFREF is a central point where multiple etiology are coinciding together that you need to understand the etiology. Then quick workup, history examination, ECG, anti-pro BNP, raised echocardiography, and then coming to the diagnosis of HEFREF. Previously, we used to give ACE, beta blocker, then MRA, then RNE, RAS blockers. But nowadays, we are advocating that every patient should be on these four drugs as early as possible. And this is the way to go about uh, diuretic, especially loop according to the volume status. Then you have further things as well. I'm just focusing, focusing on medical treatment, so not going into CRT, ICD, and others. In relation to medical treatment, that's very important slide. RNA, SGLT2, MRA, beta blocker, or any RAS blocker along with RNA or in place of RNA, like ACE or ARB should be given. So these four drugs should be started as early as possible. 
Then others diuretic according to volume status, evobridin, if you are unable to get rate uh, less than 70 with the adequate dosages of beta blockers, if not, then consider this. Digoxin, if your patient is in atrial fibrillation, hydralazine nitrate in specific rays or severe contraindication to RNA and RAS blockers, omective mecabil, low EF and hypotension, very sigit, low GF, EGFR, and patients not responding to your conventional medication, then you have to think of these two novel anti-failure medications. Now, the various ways of sequencing previously, it was ACRB, beta blocker, MRA. Nowadays, good to start with beta blocker, SCLT2, then uh, uh, angiotensin receptor, nephrosin, then mineral corticoid, but it depends on patient's characteristics. You can have various combinations of hemodynamic, renal status, other comorbidities, but a general rule I'm telling you, your patient's baseline heart rates, is it less than 60, 60 to 70, greater than 70? Very important. Blood pressure, low, normal, intermediate, or high. Kidney function, normal or abnormal, rhythm, AF or normal sinus. These features are very, if you combine these various characteristics into uh, together, you can come up with various kinds of patients. And that is very important uh, to select drugs, which one for which patients. So that I'll discuss in a moment. For an inpatient, you can do this, that uh, start combination diuretic and amare if patient is volume overloaded, Switch to RNE or ACE, ARB, beta blocker. If already on ACE or ARB, beta blocker to be used once patients, all the uvolumic and the SGLT2 should be started before discharge once your need of IV diuretic has reduced. So that's very important. Then this slide gives you an idea about various drugs. What are the caution? What are the green? What, uh, what are the red for them? Like for beta blocker, your patient is uvolumic, hemodynamically stable. Approaching uvolemia with good PP, yes, yellow, you can. But significant volume overload, poor profusion, no beta block. MRA, GFR, and potassium should be taken care of. And according to these parameters, you can think of adding MRA into your patient. RNA, again, renal function important, blood pressure important to look for and decide accordingly to these parameters. SGLT2 is something which you can offer a lot of patients because there's no issue with rate, rhythm, blood pressure, only renal function, and two, three important things, type one or history of DKA or repeated UTI. There you can't give. Otherwise, there are a lot of patients who, who can be offered SGLT2 as a drug. So it is recommended that evidence-based oral medication treatment be administered before discharge. So all four medications, there are no contraindication or relative contraindication should be added as early as possible. And if you aren't being able to, then a close follow-up after one to two weeks. So in conclusion, I would say diagnosing heart failure, classifying it, identifying it early, and its trajectory is very important. Assess baseline and sequential changes in hemodynamics, heart rate, rhythm, and renal status, creatinine pressure for rapid titration of medication. So I think this brief discussion regarding HEFREF would help you in uh, assessing, managing, and treating your patients with this condition. Thank you very much.